Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, brought to you by the TeacherCast Educational Network. If you are in charge of professional development and looking to build an innovative digital learning experience, this is the podcast for you. Join us each week as we uncover strategies that tech coaches are using to drive their digital transformations one classroom at a time. And now for your host, with over two decades of experience working with tech coaches and ed tech companies from all around the world, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. Welcome to Ask the Tech Coach, episode 100. Woohoo! Yay! This is a podcast for anybody who's an instructional technology specialist, tech coach interested in getting into the ed tech field. You name it, this is the show for you guys coming to you live every single Monday morning. We are here to help you guys in your school districts provide the best professional development. I'm here as always with my co-host, Miss Susan Vincent. Susan, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Great. Great to be back. And episode 100, wow, I'm so excited to be a part of this. I've been here for, I don't know, 20, 20, 30 episodes now, and we're at 100. What an honor. It has certainly been a nice roller coaster here. If you are a new tech coach, this is a great show for you. And I got to tell you guys, if you are looking to become a tech coach, this is an even better episode because today we are turning the tables. That's right. We are bringing on an administrator, somebody who knows all about the tech coaching position from the other side of the desk. And we are going to be talking to her about how do you get a job? What does your resume look like? What do you look for in a tech coach? And that all important question, how do you, how do you succeed, right? Like once you're in the position, what do you do to make sure that you get a chance to come back that next year and really be successful? I want to remind you guys that this coming Saturday, July 25th, we are putting together our second virtual conference all about G Suite education. Sue, you know, we had such a great time last week at the Microsoft event. Absolutely. And this coming week, we're going to be doing it all over again with G Suite education. If you guys are going to be free on Saturday, you can head on over to nice. teachercast.com net slash G Suite Live. It is 9 to 6 p.m. Eastern. We've got a great lineup featuring amazing Google trainers, some amazing guests, and you never know who's going to stop by. Check that out over at teachercast.net slash G Suite Live. And Sue, I am I'm excited to introduce my good friend onto the show today. She is certainly no stranger. She's been on TeacherCast before. She's been a friend, a mentor, and certainly somebody who I've talked a lot about tech coaching with. Sandy Paul, welcome to the show. How are you today? Uh, doing great. And thank you so much. Uh, I'm pretty humbled that you thought of me to do this. And I, uh, I appreciate um, you and Sue taking your time to talk to me today. Well, you know, I'm thinking about this and thinking about this and we're coming up to that hundredth episode. I'm going, I want to ask somebody the questions that really knows the answer. It's one thing for Sue and I to sit here and go, what does a resume look like? And we can give our opinions. But let's face it, I've never hired a tech coach. And it's easy to sit here and say, we need to have a school set up so that way the tech coach can be successful. But let's face it, I've never been in a position to set up a school for that. Sandy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, first of all, I started as a technology teacher. I actually was a, a computer science and business teacher prior to actually becoming a school administrator. And um, I did uh, coding uh, for many years. And then um, I became a director of tech. I've been a director of tech for approximately 20 something years now. And primarily um, I take care of both the instructional and also the infrastructure part of technology for many of the school districts that I've worked in. So um, it, which included me hiring um, tech coaches and people in that type of position to help our school district move forward into the 21st century and making sure that both um, students and teachers had the skills needed for the technology. So you've came up through the ranks and um, as an administrator, like Jeff said, we can sit here and say, why should a district hire a tech coach? But from your administration experience standpoint, why does a district need a tech coach? Well, it's funny because one of the things that um, when I first uh, started, I was actually doing tech coaching myself also. So, you know, like I said, I was actually, um, you know, doing workshops, um, doing presentations, stuff like that, helping teachers going through. But as time went on, it became 
it became a little bit hard to work both on infrastructure to make sure, you know, things were working right um, with the technology devices or whatever it is, and also trying to do that. So having a tech coach is very important. It should be basically on the radar of every school or of every school district to have at least one or more tech coaches in the school district. The reason being is this, for the technology to be actually integrated within the curriculum, you need a tech coach to help out with that. Many times, a lot of times, the assumption is because there are students who are young and there are teachers that are young, they know how to use the technology. Yeah, they may know how to use the technology, but they don't know how to use it for productivity, for an educational purposes, to uh, associate with the curriculum and that type of thing. So having a tech coach is vital to really get your school district or your school to move forward into the 21st century because it's no longer just an add-on, it's an integral part. One thing we've learned about remote learning, it is it is important to actually have the skill levels, both for teachers and for students to understand how the technology is used in a proper way, because that's where digital citizenship comes in, used in a proper way so that there will be learning taking place, their instruction will take place. But the other part of it is that we live in a information age. And part of information requires the technology to be used. So you have to have a tech coach. And that's why it's so important to have them because they work directly with both students and teachers to ensure that the curriculum is done in a technological way rather than it, the technology being an add-on. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that, right? Because this is what we we strive to figure out. Is the tech coach a technology position or is the tech coach a curriculum position? It's a combination, to be quite honest, because the reason why I say that is because a lot of times the tech coaches, because of what they're seeing inside a the classroom, they can actually reach out to the IT department or the technicians or myself included with the director and explain, listen, this is what we're seeing as an error or this is what we wanna try and do. How could we go about doing it? So it's actually like an intermediary person, but at the same time, their main focus should really be the, integ the integration of the curriculum, making sure the technology is integrated into the curriculum. And I'm not talking about, um, when I talk about integration into the curriculum, meaning that the technology is used for basically as a tool. So just like you have a pen or pencil that kids are using, or kids are using paper, hopefully not paper, but like they used to use pen and pencil and paper, it should be a tool that's used for the curriculum, for learning, for instruction, that type of thing. It should not really be the forefront of everything, but you need to have that tech coach to show that how it integrates within the curriculum. Well, why do school districts get it wrong, right? Because why do so many school districts have tech coaches that are kind of bobbing in the water because their, their teachers think that they're the tech person? How, how do we do this? Like, what, 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 what? I'm going to just well, keep saying it because we talked to so many tech coaches here on the show. Why do school districts just, just don't understand that a tech coach is a curricular position as well as? Right. Well, a portion of it has to do with um, the – either both the administration or the person who's in charge of um, curriculum don't understand what the tech coach is really doing. The tech coach is really supposed to be looking at a curriculum. For example, you look at um, something, in the language arts standards. When you look at the language arts standards and everything else, the standard doesn't say use technology, but they look at the standard and then it's adapted into the tech. The technology is adapted into that standard, I should say. So that's what really needs to take place. The reason why a lot of school districts make a mistake is because they are, because they are understaffed as far as the infrastructure side. So they start using the tech coaches to do that. And that's not really what they're supposed to do. They can come up, they can actually speak to the IT person or the infrastructure side to explain things that may be going wrong, but it should not be the primary person who focuses on getting things repaired, um, getting things adopted, 
you know, that type of thing, uh, you know, making sure about, you know, whatever that needs to be done. It shouldn't really be the tech coach's job to take care of that type of thing. So how do you as an administrator go about bridging that gap of encouraging your teachers, hey, this is the tech coach's role, not this? Well, a lot of times what I've done um, as as I've gone through is make sure like I do an introduction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, if I have a tech coach and everything else and I do a workshop or whatever it is, I do the workshop with the tech coach. So like more like I'm co-presenter co and they're the main presenter. But there are also other things that we do. Like say, for instance, one of the things I've done um, is primarily have the tech coach be introducing themselves at faculty meetings or have the tech coach, um, you know, say for instance, we're offering a workshop on how to use Google Docs or whatever it is. If we're doing something very, like say something simple like that, I shouldn't say really simple because some people don't know how to use Google Docs. Is somebody using Google Docs or something like that? What we do is we show them basically how it's not adding to their job, but how it's going to make their job easier. Okay. That's yeah, huge. Right. And that's one of the things that helped. Like one of the, um, in a school district I was in one and we had a tech coach. One of the things that we always had a problem with because we only had cards of Chromebooks was we could never get the Chromebooks into the hands of some of the other subject areas because the language arts department kept taking them. The reason being is that we started realizing that the language arts teachers, because they love the idea that kids could make comments, that they could actually see what as kids were typing. And because they could, um, because of the collaborative piece, they were hogging the carts. So because of that, you know, we had to do something else regarding, you know, checking out stuff. But the reason that happened was the tech coach started working with the language arts department. And it was all, all we did was say one, we just took one unit of their lesson and said, okay, the tech coach is going to work on this with you. She's going to show you how you can do this. And then all of a sudden it just blew up. And that's one of the things that also I always look at. I introduce the tech coach to the most forward thinking um, teachers that really want to do it. So teachers that want to try something, but are like a little bit afraid because, you know, it's like teachers have told me I'm going to break the internet or I'm going to break Google, which can happen, but let's not go into that. Um, but, you know, teachers, they have these fears and everything else. He, the person that I had at the time, so it could be he or she, would work hand in hand with that person over maybe a series of lessons. So that way it's basically a part of the person now becomes like the go-to person. She becomes the go-to person anytime that teacher has a problem, but it's not a matter that she takes over the instruction. She works hand in hand with the teacher. So the teacher's teaching the language arts unit, but the technology person is there with them. So it's really a scaffolding way of supporting the actual language arts teacher. So we did that in all all the subject here. Building, building relationships. I think we've talked about right. that a couple of times. W once or twice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's the most important thing is to make sure that uh, one of the things for me with a tech coach is that that tech coach, like, um, one of my tech coaches mentioned it. She's like, I'm like the, um, the Amway person. I come in, I support you, I help you and everything else to be able to get your, you know, uh, whatever your business up and running. And then I walk away. And that's what they do. They, you know, after they help a teacher or something like that, then it goes on. What I love is when you get a teacher that's passionate and really wants to know about how to learn it, and then it spreads like wildfire. It seems so easy, right? <laughs> why, why, why can't it be so easy? You have somebody that's got the knowledge. You have students that want to figure this stuff out. You put everybody together. It seems so easy, but so many people are trying to figure this out. So let me kind of ask this question to you. And, you know, this is one that we've talked about a lot here, you and I. Mm -hmm. What is the qualification of a tech coach? You've been in a situation where you've been leading, creating, designing, all those different things. What do you look for in a tech coach? For me, I look for, uh, to be honest with you, most times it's somebody that's passionate. Somebody who's really interested in really doing the integration of technology. Uh, one of my tech, tech coaches was actually a science teacher. And actually, normally it's 
normally, to be honest with you, sometimes my tech coaches, if I if it's somebody that's within the school district, it's normally the teacher that gives me uh, a lot of headaches. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. But I can see the progression of a teacher really wanting to move forward with the use of integration of technology. Um, so because of that, one of the things is that we actually use usually usually when you're looking at a tech coach, you're looking at somebody who's passionate about what they do, somebody who's really interested in the technology, somebody who's not just looking for a position or looking to um, put themselves first with the agenda for their own personal agenda, but somebody that's actually looking to um, really have the interest of the learning and the curriculum and the, the students, basically, um, as their passion and what they want us to, you know, move our kids forward. Because one of the things we have to realize is that the more we stay behind, and this is what I try to make sure everybody realizes, the more we don't do this type of thing, every year we lose a set of kids that do not have a skill set or experience that they will need, right, when they enter into the world or enter college, right? Because these are 12th graders that are walking away from our school districts and they don't have the skills to basically how they really use the technology for research, right? And you'll hear a lot of colleges in community colleges and universities complain that they're saying that the kids are walking in without the skill level of really using the technology properly. They know how to use it. They know how to use Instagram. They know how to use Uvu. They know how to use all the other stuff, but really how to really be productive in a information age is not there. So the qualities you're looking for is somebody who's passionate, somebody who's always curious. Always want to figure out, okay, all right, so I got this Chromebook. What can this Chromebook do, you know? And they go out on their own, and sometimes they find things. If they And they find things, and then if it doesn't quite explain it like how they can understand it, they go back, and they come back to you, and they say, how can I get this to do this? But these are qualities of the person, somebody who's really taking that. It's almost like somebody taking it to heart. So when, when people ask me this, as they do often, you know, what do I need to be a tech coach? And if I say passion, that doesn't you, you can't put that on a resume, right? You, no. you can say I'm a passionate educator. Of course you can, but I mean there is another component to that, which is you have to get to the, the interview, right? Now, not every tech coach is coming from within the district. Clearly, if you're yes. working with Sue and Sue's passionate, you could pull her aside and go, I've got a position you'd be great for, but there's always that question of, do you need to pad your resume with Google level X and, and Microsoft innovative Y and, and, you know, Adobe spark creative and throw the badge. Like what does that piece of paper need to look like to make you go bring that person in to show me their passion? Now Sue, wa Sue wants to know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, having those, having those different types forms of certification doesn't hurt anybody because sometimes it's something that actually um, brings up, you know, it makes a person really look at the resume as something. But I think one of the things is also when you're looking at the resume, you should look at a resume that talks about the different things you might have done. Either basically maybe in the school district that you were in before, or if it's something that basically you have done basically at the college level or you know, any of, the, of those different types of projects that you might have done, that should be basically in your resume. For example, um, for if you're a person that basically, well, I've done podcasting and I've um, you know, and everything else, that should be basically on your resume because it shows that you're a person that's looking at the technology in the sense that it goes just beyond what um, may be basically located in the classroom. So that's one of the things. Um, on the resume, you should put, um, I would always say, put stuff regarding um, anything that has to do with project-based learning or maybe anything that you might do with design thinking or any of those, uh, even if you want to use certain words, um, you could use certain words, say for instance, you could say, well, um, I've collaborated with the, educators on the ISD PLC for equity and technology, or you could put something like, oh, I have been, um, 
I've been collaborating with the science department in my school district to work on the STEM program and stuff like that. Those type of things should definitely be on your resume because if you put those things, what it does, it shows that, first of all, you're a team player, that um, you don't mind getting into the nitty gritty of dealing with technology, that type of thing, because sometimes it's the nitty gritty of technology that comes up that you might need to work on. And then, um, but it also should reflect your, um, it should reflect your passion. I hate to say that, but it should reflect your passion, your love. You don't have to use those words, but your resume should reflect what you basically uh, are, are not only looking for, but you, it should reflect who you are. That's great advice, Sandy, and thank you for sharing that from the administrator standpoint. So, you know, we've been through the interview, obviously our resume, you've hired me as a tech coach, and we've alluded to this a little bit earlier. So how are you going to introduce me to your staff? Well, first, of, like most times what I do is I introduce them to the staff basically on the basis of actually taking the person around, introducing them to the principals, having them at faculty meetings, sometimes having them at the administrative team meetings to talk about what are you doing, you know, where are you going, what you're planning to do, stuff like that. And have you prepared the staff beforehand that this person is coming on board? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And the reason being is that you want to be very careful about pre uh, people's assumptions, you know, because they're like, oh, yeah, so this person is coming in to watch what I do rather than the person like one of the main things for me for tech coaches is, is that uh, the tech coach really should not be an administrator because the whole idea is not to make the person be able to evaluate. Absolutely. It should my, be. Right. My administrators have always made it a point to talk about that. Susan is not an evaluator. Susan is here to assist you and coach. Right. And that's what it is. It's a coaching position. It's not a position that you're going to be walking in there and it's going to be a gotcha. That's not a part of this at all. This is a situation where it's a coaching situation. We're going to create a scaffold with you or create a scaffold for the building. This is how we're going to be able to move you up as your technology levels increase. And this is what you will be doing. That type of thing is what you're going to be doing with basically the teachers inside the building. And then if it's basically, it can be basically a group setting, like in a PLC, sometimes they're, into, you know, I do that type of thing. Um, they work with PLCs. Sometimes it's not a PLC. Sometimes it could be something like on a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, it matters on basically, um, first of all, it matters on the culture of the building because each building has its own culture and how the, the administration works in there, how teachers function, that type of thing. But the main thing that I um, I always look at is that the tech coach is there to support those in the building, okay? So if, if it's a, a tech coach per building, that tech coach is really supporting the teachers in that building. So that culture and um, the understanding of how things work in that building, that tech coach should basically understand. If you only have one person for an entire district, basically the tech coach functions according to you know, unfortunately, they're going to be um, changing kind of roles kind of thing in the sense of, OK, in this building, the culture is this way, while in this building, the culture is this way. So the tech the tech coach will kind of have to adjust according to the personality of the culture of the buildings. Yes. Been there, done that a few times. Right. Sandy, what, so that's one of the things. What, what's your philosophy on? And as you said, you know, the tech coach for the district or the tech coach for the building versus somebody who is a full-time teacher who then has a stipend as a tech coach. Clearly that stipend as a tech coach doesn't have the opportunity to go into coach other teacher. I agree. You know, and use that person when we need to get something fixed kind of guy, girl. Yeah. Uh, that's a mistake. Because to, I think part part of that is the reason being is that a tech coach can't be doing basically their teaching according to a subject area and then saying, okay, I'm being a tech coach. Yes, you might have part-time coaches for sports, but the problem is is that the tech coaching needs to take place at the per, at the time where teaching when the instruction and the learning is taking place at the same time. It needs to be at the same 
the same incident, the same, no, at the same time, it's more like it. And the reason being is that the, when a teacher is in our classroom, it needs to be almost like a teachable moment. You know, if it's a teachable moment, that means that the tech coach is in there and the tech coach is able to guide that teacher and guide the students into using the technology in associated with whatever is going on for the, the, for the unit of the lesson. If you're doing it on a, basically on a part-time basis, the problem is you're going to lose those moments inside the classroom. And because you're going to lose those moments inside the classroom, what's going to happen is that the person who's doing this only part-time is actually only doing workshops only. And that's going to be, that won't be able to get you to where you're talking about integrating the technology. The teachers may look at it more as an add-on rather than an integration, or actually some of them look at it as additional work rather than it's actually replacing something else that they normally do via, you know, basically paper and pen or whatever it is. So uh, my personal belief is that tech coaches should be a full-time position inside the school district or inside the school um, because that's the only way you can move forward. Don't forget, technology changes, okay? Everybody used to say technology changes every 18 months. Well, it doesn't change. It's changing way faster than that right now. So because the technology is changing more, quicker than 18, you know, 18 months, I would say that as a tech coach, the person needs to stay on top of that type of technology, understanding what's going on, but also to do that kind of thing, that person needs to spend time, you know, what I call play with the technology, you know, play with the technology, see what it can do, and then see how that's integrated within the curriculum. So tech coaches out there listening, I think we can come to a conclusion that from what Sandy is telling us, it's so important to, number one, have a knowledgeable administrator on your side who understands the role and can help um, um, bring that role forward and keep going to the next step. So, you know, tech coaches, if you're out there, you know, you know, I, work on and it comes from both sides it has to be you as a tech coach developing that relationship with your administrator you know making them understand again once you're hired show them that passion like sandy talked about and then administrators who are listening you know it's so important that you understand this role like jeff has alluded to earlier about the difference between a technician coach and a integration tech coach right Sandy, talk to us a little bit about relationships. As a tech coach, you need to have a good relationship with your teachers. But in a yeah. situation, you're not a teacher, so you're not one of them. Mm -hmm. You need to have a good relationship with your tech director. Right. But you're not an administrator. And I've seen a lot of tech coaches say, you know, there's there's that you, know, you can't tell the tech director what to do, even though you're coming at it from your classroom point of view. But at the same time, you have to have a good relationship with your curriculum person. Yes. Even though your curriculum person might see you as the tech coach. And at the same right. time, you're needing to have a relationship with one or many principals who might not get it at all, who might just be told you've got a tech coach, go do it. How do you survive? Yeah. And you know where I'm coming from on this is better than everybody else. Yeah. But but how do you form those relationships? So you are trusted by teachers, but you're also looked at as an equal in the administration's right. minds, even though you're not equal, if that makes sense. Right. Well, well the one thing is that in developing relationships with uh, both administrators and also from teachers and um from those who understand and don't understand the whole process of being a tech coach. The whole idea in developing the relationship is always be available more or less. Okay. Because one of the things that I found out is that the, if you make yourself kind of available for the teacher side of it, um, a lot of times teachers sometimes look at, um, don't quite understand and it's basically, as an administrator for myself, one of the things is that if there's a misunderstanding, I'm trying to make it clear again and again. You know, 
And I say, I'll say to my administrators, okay, just to let you know, the tech coach is not in charge of the infrastructure, okay? The tech coach can approach an IT staff member or even approach me and talk to me about that stuff. But at the same time, it, the person cannot just fix things. It's not a matter of a fixing of something. You know what I mean? Um, the one thing that I have to say, though, is that administrators and teachers, okay, and um, the main thing is being um, able to listen. We have two ears and one mouth. We should be listening to what a tech coach says, okay? Now, the thing is, is that we have a lot of people that actually, they don't listen. They listen to respond rather than actual listen. So for, for me personally, I can tell you this. Um, if a person would listen, stop and just listen. Um, the whole idea is we can learn from everyone. We are not, none of us, you know, people call me the tech guru. I am not no tech guru, okay? I don't know every single thing, but there from everyone else, I can glean some, some something from everyone else and understanding. All right. That's the reason why I believe I am a lifelong learner. I will always want to learn. Actually, curiosity always gets the best of me. That's the reason why I always learn. But uh, that's one of the things that happened. We are in this basically together where our motive is not basically that you're the tech coach, you're supposed to do this and everything else. The whole idea is to form a sort of collaborative effort. And to get principals or to get administrators to understand it, plus also get teachers to understand it, you kind of have to make yourself available for them when they need you. You know what I mean? And even if, say, for instance, if somebody comes, you know, say, for instance, I had a tech coach approach me once and say to me, okay, this principal says his security cameras aren't working. All right. So what I did was I called the principal and I was like, first of all, tech coach was not the person to tell it to. Number one. Number two, can you get one of your secretaries, fill out a tech request? I will make sure somebody gets it fixed. Okay. But, so but, I got it done. <laughs> but, but okay. So what happens there, right? We've all been in the situation. Principal comes to tech coach and says, my security cameras aren't fixed. You then take that information, go to the tech director, and then the principal gets yelled at for telling the tech coach. And now the principal's upset with the tech coach because he just got yelled at by the tech director. Obviously, the answer is relationships and, and saying Obviously. things the right way, right? Correct. And the tech coach should never say, that's not my job. But they've Correct. got to stand up for themselves. And, and look, you know, it's usually the teacher asking the question of the tech coach, not the principal. The principal usually knows who to go to right. and where, right? Usually it's usually it's a teacher saying, I need a light bulb, right? And, right. and can, can you hook me up with the new light bulb or something like that? But how yeah. do you navigate those waters? How, you know, the question is, how do you get to that second year? Well, that's the thing. It's, it's a matter basically of um, being approachable, you know, but also being, um, being aware of the culture and understanding what's going on basically in that building at the time or in the, um, in the school district. Um, one of the things that you're, you bring up a good point, because a lot of times, sometimes teachers will ask tech coaches for certain things, you know, oh, can I get a Chromebook? That's not the person to ask. You know what I mean? So if you're asking, if you're asking the tech coach about a Chromebook, my biggest thing to them is like, I'll go back to the tech coach and I was like, one of the things I always ask is, okay, do we know a reason why they want a Chromebook? Do we know why they want such and such a technology and everything else? The tech coach normally will say, well, I have no idea and everything else. In that situation, normally I then step in and I'll say to either the principal or I actually approach the teacher and say to the teacher, okay, explain to me what it is that you're trying to do, okay? Because that's the whole behind the whole thing behind the curriculum and the tech coach. Explain to me what you would try to do with the tech coach next to me. So I I'm with a teacher the tech coach and uh, myself are all three together sitting there talking about what is it that you're trying to do and why do you need this technology? That's what I do. And what I try to do a lot of times also is, as you're saying, you made a valid point. It's how you approach the person. It's how you speak to the person. Uh, all of those things makes it important for how you develop these relationships with both the teachers and also the administrative staff. 
It's how you approach them. It's how you speak to them. But it's also making yourself available and realizing that, yes, okay, this may not be under my purview in the sense of I am not supposed to be fixing infrastructure or supplying the technology or that type of thing. But I know someone that I can help you too. I've had tech coaches say to you, listen, I will get back to you or I will speak to the person who's in charge and I will find out what, you know, I'll do that. And then I will tell them to contact you about this. And that's normally basically how you develop relationships. And you're correct. Both of you, both you and uh, Sue and Jeff are correct about relationship. The most important thing is developing that relationship between uh, both the administration and with the teachers. You know, Sue, that's one of those things that we've talked about a lot because it's difficult. A tech coach Very much. often is in their mid, late 20s, and I'm generalizing here, and they're put in a position where they're now coaching people much older than them, but they're also put in a position where they're in the conference room desks next to the superintendents, neck, and they're expected to perform like an administrator and, and do presentations and give projections and you know, stand up. And, and for me, that was scary for me at first, right? Like you have to say, here's what I'm saying, here's what I'm thinking, and I know what I'm doing because you have to kind of have to have that hospital to right. it. Yes, but, and you have to have your foot in the water everywhere. Right. Right. And that's a that you both make a valid point. Sue, that is that's the point too. Is making sure that that's the reason why I make the comment about making yourself available. In that it that, yes, you it's almost like you need to be a jack of all trades. Okay? In the sense that yes, you may be at the administrative table. OK, and you're hearing what's going on and you might have to do presentations, et cetera. And as, when you're at the administrative table, take into listening in what they're what they would like to see and where we want to go and everything else. And to be honest with you, the administrative administrator should support the tech coach when the tech coach goes into the buildings. With the teachers. So if you have a, a principal, right, that is very much wants to move forward or that type of thing. Maybe latch on to that one principle and say, okay, I'm going to help you get your building where you see you want it to go with the technology and the integration of technology. And with that, spend time in there into the building getting that done. But we do have to basically, um, you have to be basically trying to find the right balance between the two is not easy. It can be done, but it's not an easy thing. But the other part of it is that the whole idea of a tech coach is important. It, not to be taken for granted. It should not be something that uh, basically throw you in there and say, okay, you do your job. No, that's not how it's supposed to work. Whoever decides to come up with a tech coaching position in this district should be supporting the tech coach as much as possible in order to get you know the integration of technology done inside the school. Like I said, integration, not an additional add-on. You know, Sue, I, I wish that one day we could get Sandy to talk passionately about all this stuff. No, <laughs> we need really talk hard about to open up about these things. <laughs> Man, Sandy, you, I could have an ounce of that passion. <laughs> uh, you know, Sandy, you've been, and to say a good friend of mine for the last nine years is, yeah. is amazing. And, you know, as, as we sit here and, you know, right now I'm only a few. If we're recording this on July 9th. I'm two days away from my nine year anniversary with TeacherCast. And you have been a, a rock as a support for not only me as, as a professional, as a teacher, as an educator, all of those things. And so I can't say thank you enough. I hope to get you on before our 200th episode. And, <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I want to wrap up with one more question here. And this is the one that I've asked you more times than not. What advice? Like, what advice? Like, you know, everybody's in their different situation. Every tech coach has that administrator or that situation or those teachers. How 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 do you get up every day? How, how does it, you know, what advice do you have for tech coaches to really just keep pointing them on the right path and say, look, what, the work you're doing is great, especially now that, you know, you could be in a class one day and then home on quarantine for the next three weeks. Right. What, are you telling, what are you telling your tech coaches? Don't give up. Never give up. Keep pursuing it. 
just keep, I mean, keep going. I mean, I understand you're hitting the head against the wall, but be, be, on, be advised, okay? Somewhere along the line, the wall does crack and it does develop a hole. So and as we all know, with this quarantine thing, it developed a crack and then next thing you know, it became a gaping hole and we still kind of have a gaping hole and we're still trying to figure out how to do this. But the whole idea is never, ever give up because the whole, the, the tech coach is vitally important for us to prepare our students for this 21st century that we live in. We, we are in an information age. And because we're in an information age, the information age is based on the technology. And for, the, for kids to be prepared for their future, it, they need to have a tech coach or actually have the skills to be able to walk away from a high school or walk away from wherever they are, knowing that they are prepared for both college and career. And the tech coach is vital for that position because the tech coach is going to help teachers to move forward with the integration of technology, but also move, for, move the kids forward so that they have a lifelong skill of integrating technology within their own you know, life or you know, their life as they see it. That and is success. awesome. That's awesome advice, Sandy. And after 15 plus years of doing this, it still, you know, lights a little fire under myself, you know, motivates me. You know, I have to remember that every single day. And yes, I've been doing this long enough that yes, walls have <laughs> cracked and the holes have come through. But, you know, then you move on to a new person and you do it all over again. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's important. It's in a very important position and it's not something to take lightly. As an administrator, it's not something I take lightly. I think it's um, very important. And um, so far for the districts I've been, I've been able to convince them to be able to definitely have tech coaches. If you're looking for more information about this subject, we are going to be holding a live virtual conference on August 8th by tech coaches for tech coaches and really because of tech coaches. We're hoping to have Sandy Paul. I'm going to put you on the spot, Sandy. If you're available, we'd love to have you. <laughs> You know, we're looking for great presenters just as much as we're looking to have great audience members. If you'd like to be a presenter, please let us know. You can reach out to us at Ask the Tech Coach. Or if you want to bring your tech director on, we would love to have Sandy be put into a round yes. table where we can all discuss these things. No topic is off limits. It is again August 8th. We're doing Tech Coach Live, a full day of PD from 9 till 6 Eastern Standard Time. Check it out over at teachercast.net slash Tech Coach Live. You can check it out and subscribe to our YouTube channel and be a part of all of the great things we have over at askthetechcoach.com. Sandy, you're amazing. Thank you so much for <laughs> your time. Much. Um, Thank you. Her links, her bio, her all that great stuff's going to be over on our show notes. This is episode 100. But Sandy, before I let you go, where can we get more information about the great stuff you're doing? What is your social media hookup? Uh, well, I tend to use Twitter a lot. Uh, so I'm at S Paul, P A U L 6414. So that's my Twitter. That's my Twitter account. Um, and I do have a uh, Facebook page. Uh, just look up Sandra K. Paul. And um, you'll find me on Facebook. And I'm, primary, I'm so happy uh, that you're here. I Sandy, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you so much. You know, I, I you. feel... I just got a master's degree in, in tech coaching. So, yes. you know, I, I, I'm much. so glad that we had this and we would love to have more, right? We would love to have more great guests, just like Sandy. not that there are a lot of get great guests like Sandy, but we would love to have more <laughs> great guests. And if you'd like to be a guest oh. here on ask the tech coach, please let us know. Sue, where can we find out more information about the great stuff that you're doing? And I uh, got to ask, cause people are asking, did you put in your MIE application? Working on it. I, I know I'm down to the wire. <laughs> It, you know, I'm already in back to school mode. Isn't this crazy? So, <laughs> so you know, things are uh, ramping up. But yes, I'm working on it. And you can find me on Twitter at SV314DWS. And that new website will also be out soon, techimaginations.net. And of course, again, this is episode number 100 of the Ask the Tech Coach podcast. You can check us out over on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach. And we want to say one last time, thank you guys for not only nine years of TeacherCast, 100 episodes of Ask the Tech Coach, 230 episodes of the TeacherCast podcast, and countless other great things that we're doing. Plus, don't forget those three amazing 
virtual conferences this summer and possibly a fourth one, Sue, by the way. We might be doing one for content creators. We're trying to put together one awesome. at the end of August. So on yeah, behalf of everybody right. here in the Tech Teacher Cast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you guys to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to Ask the Tech Coach, hosted by Jeff Bradbury of the TeacherCast Educational Network. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach or online at www.askthetechcoach.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.